You're with Pastor Troy right here. We're getting excited. We got a special program for you. You're going to be seeing over the next few weeks until we get ready for season two, you're going to be seeing the best of the On the Dock season one. These will be coming at you hard and steady. I want you to get them out there, check them out, help us get them out to your friends. We want to see you on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes as well. But this is the best of, get this, the best of season one. Get ready for it. We're going to be coming at you with a super season two coming up this August. We'll see you soon. Enjoy this episode of On the Dock season one. Best of. Pastor Troy, we're glad to have you here. We're going to have a great one for you today. We are ready to get out there, and we're all about conversations to propel your faith out of the shallows and into the deep. My wife says it's too loud in her ears. Is it still too loud in your ears? It's loud. I love that song, Loud. I'm so glad Lucas has got it cranked up in my ears today. That is a great job that these guys did putting that together, our theme song. I love it. I love it. We're out in the dock. We're doing it. We're doing it today. I hope you joined us. You found us. You're watching us. You're on one of our credible platforms, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. Go check it out. Google Podcasts, Facebook, Roku. How do you find us on Roku? Download the SermonNet app and find all on the dock with Pastor Troy. You can find us also on Rumble. Rumble's the up and comer and SermonNet. I love SermonNet. That's where we host our stuff. And you can always reach out to us on our social media partners. My wife's a social media guru. She's big into Facebook and Instagram. And I don't know about that. You don't Twitter. I don't know either. You don't about Twitter. Twitter. You Telegram. We Telegram. We, I, I like Telegram. Yeah, check it out. When you right. find us, look. Subscribe, like, notify, comment, tell other people about us, and be a part of the On The Dock team. We love having you there. And you can go download the Patreon app. I love it. And you can become an On The Dock partner. Look us up, On The Dock with Pastor Troy, and become one of our partners or a sponsor. We're trying to raise money right now to get Lucas Winkler, who's our executive director on camera, to do that. You're going to have to give a Patreon gift. Because right now, all we have a Lucas. Lucas is our, our, our executive director but he's also i put his picture up here for his mama he's our executive director we also call the techno wizard of this place so all we can afford is this picture he does have a mic that's hot say hello lucas hey guys he's being held hostage if only you guys could see my real face yes you can see your real face you can do that by going to my patreon right now become a sponsor or partner and uh, you might get one of these fine coffee cups someday, you know, to see what you got to do here. I got to go back and find a better slide. Oh, and all, I'm right here on the set with my beautiful wife, Mother Beth. She's my co-host today, and we'll be here. We, we're having a good time. We're going to get with you now. We're in part six of our Psalms Volume 1 project, Songs for the Soul, Message for the Heart. Hope you've been enjoying this Psalm series. I have been enjoying it. Psalm 121, I lift my eyes. Check that out. If you want to listen to more about these Psalm projects, these were preached at Community Faith Church. You can go check out the fuller, larger versions of these. We're doing these kind of for the podcast style, kind of have a little more conversation about it. I think these are great. And I thought we just thought they had more teaching and we could kind of get into it a little bit. And But we want you to go listen to the larger version. You can check that out at SermonNet. Go look up Community Faith Church channel. You can see the archives there. You can go to coftv.com. We have a archives available link there as well that Haley's put up, but we'd love to have you check this out. It's so good. Psalm 121 is going to be great today. So let's check that out. So uh, we're going to get ready as all of these, we have kicked them off with a reading of the Psalm and a musical rendition of the Psalm that's been put together by Lucas Winkler, our technical wizard who is invisible on the set because you got to raise money to get an extra camera. You need extra camera. And then look, Ben Ottolini. We got to get Ben back here. Ben's my co-host. He's not co-hosted with me in a while. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm kind of missing me some Ben. Ben's like in vacation mode right now. I mean, we got to get him back off vacation, get him back in the studio. But to get our fix of Ben and a little bit of Lucas, these guys have put together this Psalm 121. I lift my eyes. The song is, oh, what's the song, Lucas? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. It's Jesus Culture and Mac Brock put together the song, I Lift My Eyes. It's based on Psalm 121. Let's get into this. Let's listen to this. Let's get that coffee. 
get that tea, get ready, kick back. Let's get into the psalm, get into the song, and then we'll dig deep into Psalm 121. You ready, Mother Beth? I'm ready. All right, here we go. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Nothing shall I fear on this battleground. Nothing shall I fear when the enemy surrounds me. You will defend me, and I won't be afraid. This is not the end. I won't be afraid when the odds are stacked against me. You will defend me. I lift my eyes to the mountains. You are higher still. I lift my eyes to the heavens. You are greater still. My strength comes from the Lord, the name above it all. And my strength comes from the Lord. And everywhere I go, you are by my side. In every single turn, you're before me and behind me. You always defend me. Oh, I lift my eyes to the mountains. You are higher still. I lift my eyes to the heavens. You are greater still. My strength comes from the Lord who reigns above it all. My strength comes from the Lord. In a mighty fortress for every weakness, I am not helpless. You never failed me once. I ever say you're for every failure. I am not helpless. Cause you never failed me once. A mighty fortress. For every weakness, I am not helpless. You never fail me once. I have a savior for every failure. I am not helpless. Cause you never fail me once. Oh, I lift my eyes. To the mountains, you are higher still. I lift my eyes to the heavens, you are greater still. My strength comes from the Lord, the name above it all. My strength comes from the Lord. Just incredible. Lucas, mm. that, that was just phenomenal that with Ben and really the work good. done on that. 
I mean, just the, the reflection at the end there. Did you, you got the, the reflection off whatever sun you, the, that was the Lord watching you guys. They had the Shekinah reflecting off the guitar there. That was, that was so good. Golly. Guys, I hope you enjoy those. Those are great. You can go find all those. If you want to watch all those, Lucas, there was a way you told us on the episode one, people can go just get those. How do they do that? Yeah. So if you go to the Community of Faith YouTube page, there is an, a uh, playlist called the Psalm Series Playlist, and it has all those songs on there. Great. Go get those if you want. You can always watch these as well, but those are just fabulous. You just need to have those. Uh, let's get into Psalm 121. You ready, hon? I'm ready. All right. So it's the authorship of Psalm 121. <laughs> it's not David again. David writes about the somewhere in the first 74 Psalms or mostly David Psalms, but Psalm 121 fits in a group of 15 Psalms called the Psalms of Ascent. So when the pilgrims would make those three trips to uh, Jerusalem and climb the, the hill going to Mount Zion, they would sing these songs when they started the ascent. Mm. So when they started their walk up, do you remember being in Israel when they played these on the bus? I do. We were in Israel, and every time we would, we heard the same songs over and over. So we'd be down the Dead Sea or be someplace, and they'd start up the mountain, and our our tour guide would start playing the Psalms of Ascent. Yeah, yeah, they were they were triumphant. Dun, yeah. da, dun, da, dun. You're going in, da, da, da. and we got to know them because you'd go out every day and you come back in, and you, you would hear them every day. Yeah. And I could see how they would be; they were kind of catchy, you know, you know, like not like when the saints go marching in, but you have kind of that feel to it, you know. Yeah, that was a good touch. Psalm and I of remember Ascent. coming into Jerusalem when he played to that. Jerusalem, yeah. to Jerusalem. That was great. <laughs> I wish I could sing. I can't sing. <laughs> I, we'll leave that to Ben. There, the Psalms, so Psalms one twenty through one thirty four, the Ascent Psalms. David would have definitely sung these going. Going in, uh, David was a singer, a musician. He probably played these for the group going in. Uh, he would have performed these. Maybe he put them to spiffy tunes. You never know. Mm -hmm. But David, like all the pilgrims, would have known these by heart. I, and they would have been sung antiphonally. A lot of them would have been that some, the, the, the leader of the group would say one lyric and some, everybody else would shout back the other. Like, you know, it'd be like a, a military cadence where a sergeant does a line and the troops kind of sing back mm -hmm. antiphonally. There'd be a response. And the theme of Psalm 121 is it's all about pilgrimage. It's a psalm of confidence that when we get to Zion, there our Lord Yahweh is going to be. And it's from there. That's his footstool. He's going to be our guardian. And we're, we're in the place of guardian and protection. Now I and, have Bill Murray in my head. Yeah, before I knew <laughs> she was walking next to me. I was having the same thing. And the bad thing <laughs> is you get married for a while, your brains start merging. And, and that's good for me because it's improving me. It's bad for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> because she thought of Bill Murray, and I already thought of Bill Murray. We're channeling one brain at this point in time. Yeah. Yeah, I feel sorry for you. It's bad. Yeah, so the psalm breaks down. The psalm is a great psalm. Let me get get on the right screen here. The <laughs> psalm breaks down into an affirmation. Verse 1 and 2 is an affirmation that our help comes from God. If they get to the, if they make the hit to the top of the hill, they're going to get help from God. Number 2, verses 3 and 4, it's a song of praise. They're going to sing that the God that we're going to, he's not asleep. He's there. He's watching over us. He's ready. And verse 5 through 6, 5 and 6 is a song of praise about a God who always watches us. Again, that that shepherdly approach that he watches over. And then finally, seven and eight, it's an affirmation that when we arrive, that God who covers us, he will protect us on our journey to him. And our the Bible says our comings and our goings. Mm. So we've already been talking about some of the series about how a lot of us have faced challenges. We've seen a lot of challenges in our churches and our church recently just for different things. But we've really seen that as people press on God, God's getting people through it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really make it, developing a good culture in our church where people know that they keep their eye fixed on God, he'll get them through. And yeah. this was what the song was about. Get your eye fixed on Zion, the hill of God, get up there and God's got you. So yeah. let's get into this just a little bit. Uh, you can get the fuller version at uh, coftv.com, you can find the sermon series we did called the Psalms Volume 1 Project. This is Psalm 121. I looked up to the mountain. I will lift my eyes. That's where the song lyrics came from, from the song. I look up to the mountain. I will lift my eyes is the New King James language. I will look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? That's a question. So probably the, 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 the tribal leader, the elder, would be singing that. He would shout out to the crowds walking up. I will look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? And the people would respond, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hmm. They would have responded. And this one, it says, Lord. Now, it's not Adonai. It's not a clean Yahweh. It's really close to Yahweh. Some people say it's the equivalent, but it's not. It's Yehovah. And Yehovah is, Jehovah normally is the, the, the Greek pronunciation of Yahweh. But in this case, when you go really look it up, it's Yehovah. So it's a little more different because Yahweh is the, the special one, but Yehovah is the existing one. So it means he's always there. 
So mm. it, they changed the tense of it just enough to know that as we climb that hill, it's like a lighthouse whose light never goes out. The existing one who made the heavens and earth. Mm. His light's been there. It will be there. will continue to be there. So that's a bonus. I didn't get that out when I did the message before. I had to really work through that because a lot of things translated as Yahweh. And when you go look at it in the linear Bible in the Hebrew, it's just not Yahweh. It's a different version of Yahweh. So hmm. everybody gets lazy and they say, yeah, it's Yahweh. But Yehovah, Yehovah, the existing one, the, the, the one for age to age and to come. It's, it's a little more closer to Adonai. It's a little more formal. It's a little more special. Yeah. Yeah. The opening verse is a Q&A. You see that question, then the people answer, sung probably antiphonally. And it's all about lifting our eyes up. Where does my help come from? Who made the heavens and earth? And then I, I love that. And it's an act. Where does my help? It comes from the Lord who made. I, I, I acknowledge right there that my help, I need help. Mm -hmm. Maybe That's the best good. thing we could all do right now is stop and say, Lord, we need help. That's for sure. Yeah, we need some help right now, don't we? So if you, as you look at this stuff, it's really good. They recognize right off the bat that the Lord's their great shepherd. You can kind of feel that in this. My help comes from the Lord. He, he's looking over me. He's, he's the shepherd on the top of the hill watching his sheep graze. And he's the one who made everything. Mm -hmm. our, our shepherd isn't just our shepherd. He's the one who made the pasture, made the field, made us, knows us. He, he's got this thing. So for the, for the Jews that we talk about in this, the ones that would have been the pioneers or the pilgrimage, pilgrims going up, for the Jews, Zion was literally God's dwelling place. It was kind of like the footstool of God. And Zion is the refuge city of God. So they were going to the place where if, they, if you just get there, you find God. Now, we all know God's everywhere. God's right. omnipresent, omniscient. But, but there, was something, there is still something special in the Bible about Jerusalem. That's why we take Jerusalem serious. There, in, in the Bible, there's seven rings of holiness. And Jerusalem... And inside Jerusalem is the temple, and the, inside that is the Holy of Holies. That's the most sacred place for mm -hmm. the Jews. And then it backs out to the Temple Mound, to Jerusalem, to Israel. Then it goes to the world. So mm -hmm. it's actually it's actually the Ark, the Holy of Holies, the Holies, the 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 the, the courtyard. Jerusalem, Israel, and the world. So there's like seven spears. Hmm. And they were pressing in as they sing closer and closer. They know they're coming into the bullseye. They're going to work their way by the end of the festival. They'll be standing there in the in the temple court waiting on the supreme sacrifice that they'll make. And, and you know, they're right there. So right. the good thing about us is we don't have to make that journey to get to know Jesus Christ or to have him in our lives. We can just simply open our hearts to him right now. Yes. And we can make the ascent right now by just looking to him. But back to Psalm 121 verse 3, he will not let you stumble, Beth. He good. promises, aren't you good? I'm he will glad. not he will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. He is not going to sleep on you either. My wife goes to sleep on me <laughs> so often. I mean, yesterday, yet yesterday now. we were all tired yesterday. Uh -huh. So our daughter comes in middle of the middle of the afternoon. We'd had it Back in the old days when I first started in the insurance business, my, my grandpa, the, the, their practice was we'd go home, eat lunch, and have a nap because we're Italians. T Italians take a siesta. I got rid of that somewhere after I got kids and got married. As I get older, I'm moving back to when I eat my lunch now. Yeah. I need my siesta again. I need about an hour. And then I'm much better. I can work till 8 or 9 or 10 at night. Yeah, I can do that. Like but, a good power but God does not need a siesta. Here the Psalms goes, he will not let you stumble. He will not, New King James, allow your foot to be moved. I love that. And the one who watches over you will not slumber. He will not, he, he who keeps you will not slumber. Those are two different languages there. But what I like about those is he doesn't stumble. He won't allow you to be moved. In other words, he has stability. He has the ultimate stability. Our God has the ultimate stability. And because throughout the Old Testament, it's always understood that if you lose your footing, then you've lost the battle. You've, if you lose the footing, it's an expression that disaster is for certain. Yeah. And so footing and, 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 and not falling asleep and missing what's going to happen to you is so important. So right. what they're saying is they moved to Zion. We're getting to the place where God is always watching and he doesn't get moved. Mm -hmm. I did an illustration when I did this at church with my son. Caleb was in town and uh, I coached Caleb in football. So it was a chance for me to push him around. Mm -hmm. And the last time I pushed Caleb around in a sermon illustration or like in football, he was in ninth grade. You know, he played, you know, I coached him all the way through ninth or through eighth grade. And, uh, it used to be when he's eighth grade, he was like uh, he was like six one and you know smaller than me, and now he's six five, six six, and as big as me. And I I was showing an example Sunday of how if you when you block, you need to spread your legs and get a good stable footstep. And when you drive into a, an opponent, you you, you got to get those feet way out there wide and kind of drive them and keep control and you can control person. That's why when you see like a, um, like a truck with dualies on the back, you see trucks that are pulling things, but then you see trucks pulling these big cattle things or 
maybe they're pulling a fifth wheel, right. or maybe you ever notice that a lot of times they'll have dual wheels on the mm -hmm. back. That's because dual wheels give them more more ability not to be moved right. when that truck stops or pushes. It won't push the back end of that around. Mm -hmm. Same thing on a tractor. Your, your your dad worked tractors. I don't think I ever saw your dad with dual wheels on any of his tractors. I don't know. Maybe you didn't have problems. Your dad's hill. Remember. Your dad's fields were all relatively high up. But people that got to get down in the mud and stuff, and they need like quad pull. They'll put dual wheels on the back of those right. tractors, and that gives them the ability to get better traction. You got more feet on the ground. It's more stable. Can't turn the tractor over and stuff like that as easy. So I mean, anytime you can get your foot stance wider, and you can get more get down underneath it, and you can drive and power. So I, I did an illustration where I was just showing Caleb. I, I asked him stand up and said, "I want to just drive you." And I showed I showed how he's a bigger opponent than I. That if I had my feet tight, he could kind of manhandle me, and then my feet cause me to topple and stuff. But if I got him out. Out, I could push him. The problem is he gave me resistance, like he should have <laughs> given me resistance, like he used to give me resistance. But his resistance now is six foot five, you know, some sort of two hundred and something pounds, and I've got a sore back still today from it because yeah. when I drove my hips up into him like you're supposed to to push him, um, he pushed back. He pushed back, <laughs> and I'm in front of everybody on TV because we broadcast this thing, and everybody in the room, and you know, no way I'm going to back out because I thought I was going to fall backwards. So I drove my hips in it farther, and my back sore. Both sides of my back are hurting, so that's why I had to take naps because I've had to take a lot of ibuprofen. So the key is, I'm not God, thank God. Yeah. God's stance will not be moved, and there's not a better person to drive people than God. So and what this says is God's stance will, will be in such a way that he can never be moved. Mm. I mean, he's got a big advantage. And so it was true, it's true that's so important. So verse, uh, verse 3 says, verse 3 and 4 says, he will not let you stumble, and the one who watches over you will not slumber. Let me show you the verse 4 here too. Verse 4 says, indeed, he who watches over Israel ne ne never slumbers or sleeps. Now, I want you to think about that, Beth. This is a challenge because you are a sleeper. Mm -hmm. My wife goes to sleep so fast, it's ridiculous. Lucas goes to bed very early too. You can slumber quick too, probably, can't you? You're a busy guy. He's up early and stuff like that. I, I, I don't go to sleep at night like it. Me, me and Megan are wired differently than the rest of my family. We stay up as late as we can. We might snooze occasionally. But my mindset's this. If I go to bed, I have to start over. So I stay up as long as I can to try to have a little life at the end of the night. Because if I go to sleep, it starts over. And so I don't want to start over. But as I get older, I find myself snoring earlier often. I have to sleep when I can't yeah. sleep because I don't sleep in the middle of the night. But our verse says our God never slumbers or sleeps. He's not like us. He's not getting old. He's not all that. He's not anxious about things. He's not worried. He just is, and he's always watching. Verse four. Don't you like that? I do like that. The one who watches over you never sleeps or, or slumbers. The word for keeps watch or who watches watches. The word there is shamar. Shamar is a term. Is it's like like the night guard. He never, never has to take a night off. So, so God's watching us at all times. In other words, he's vigilant. Our yep. God is very vigilant, Beth. Good to know. He's always on duty. The great shepherd's always on duty. You know, what's about you and I, if we were shepherds, you know, all of us guys in there, we'd have to rotate shifts. I'll take the night shift. You take the day. You take, God doesn't have any shift changes. He just says, I got this and I got it. I will have it, and I always will have it. Our God doesn't need a second string or third string, a backup or anything. He's just ready to go. He's always watching us, always on duty. Our God, I mean, I want you to think about this. Our God is on duty, and he's able to take on all challengers because his stance is proper. That's he good. can handle it. Isn't that yeah. good? That's, that's a really refreshing thing. For me as a football coach, you can live in this in this Psalm. Psalm 121 was made for football coaches. <laughs> it was. Psalm 121, verse 5. The Lord himself watches over you. So we're not getting some second hand, some third string, some hired hand. You know what I mean? Right. That, that's the one thing. I want, I, want to, I, I, got, I got a little time here to gripe. I'm watching the clock here. But if I have one thing to gripe about, what I've seen the most as a pastor, we're doing a series. Wow. Check out if we, you know, check it out. You'll find them. We're doing them in multiple parts. You'll see them at different times. We're doing these series called Pastoring, uh, in, Pastoring Beyond 2020. And you're going to see, we're going to have all kinds of different, we've got different pastors that we've been bringing in and they're good leaders that we're talking to leaders that have gotten through this. They've led their churches through it, through what's happened in COVID and kind of leading into the future. And what we're really looking at is what it takes to lead a church effectively. And, and, and contrasting that to churches that have disappeared because of COVID churches that have quit existing, you know, so many churches have shut down mm. that people have left churches and not coming back. And part of that has to do with the fact was 
was that church meaningfully engaged in the work of the church while this was going on, while COVID was happening? And, and one of my biggest concerns is I saw so many of our churches deactivate their giving to missions, deactivate their work toward missions. They weren't able to fund it because people weren't able to support it. Right. They weren't supporting the church because they weren't going to church, so they didn't tithe. Because if you're not going, you don't tithe. That's not what it says, does no. it? No. no. It says you tithe your gifts because they go to the storehouse. And so the one thing I th saw in all these churches that we bring in these leaders in is that these churches had meaningful ministry going on. The pastors were effective. And even though they may be not meeting live at their campus, they had virtual campuses going. They had alternative ministries going. They stay engaged right. in their missions and they have thrived and they're going to continue to thrive. What I saw the difference was, was that number one, the pastors have real relationships with God. Right. Number one. Number two, they take their role as a shepherd as a under shepherd of God, they take it seriously as if they are co-heirs. Right. They don't see themselves as hirelings. And we had a lot of pastors in the region. They got that first couple of weeks off and they go bonus vacation time. Mm -hmm. Then they extended the leave and they thought we got a bonus month. And then I have colleagues that literally in our region here that said, it was like a sabbatical for me. Right. And I said, you weren't at our church. We're all exhausted. We're in month three, and we're feeding thousands of people the House of Hope. We're cooking on Saturdays. We're doing broadcasts on Sunday. We're doing special episodes. We are exhausted, and we're only in month three. Right. Well, you know, times like this, that's when the church should shine. I mean, it's it's what the church is made for. It, it, it is. But if your church wasn't doing that, then people are like, well, what's it good? And they don't really need my tithe. I'll get it when I get back because nothing's happening. And they were all like in stasis. And a church that's in stasis is not in stasis. It's dead. Right. It's just not what God wants. He no. wants us to live. And so I, when you get that pastor in Beyond 2020, you're going to hear that. But I think here we need to realize our God, our God is always on, I'm going back this up, always on duty, able to take on all challengers. And he expects us as his church to be with him in that process and us to be as pastors and leaders in the church. He expects us to offer the same kind of service right. to the gospel. Not that, saying that we don't need time off. We need time off we and we need days of rest. Human beings. But right. we're resting to prepare ourselves for the next service. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I got a vacation coming up soon. I need it bad so right. I can get back and work harder. Yeah. So so there's a purpose to it. There's a good thing. So you want to take care of yourself. The right. Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your keeper. I like that. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. And the Lord is your shade at your right hand. Those are the New King James language there over and against that. I just want you to think about that. The Lord watches over you and me, Beth. Mm -hmm. No second class person is hired to watch over us. He does. Yeah. And I think likewise, when I was talking about what I was talking about was a lot of churches have really struggled through this because their pastors were acting as hirelings, not in reference to how the Lord called him to do. He wants us to do it the way he taught us. He wants us to be co-heirs. He wants us to be owners in the sense that we'll lay our lives down for our sheep as well. Right. The Bible says in John, no greater love have a friend than to lay down his life for another. Right. We got to, I don't know what our church would do right now. I, 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 I say this seriously. I, this COVID thing is serious. I got it. It's sick. It's a sickness. I, I lost loved ones. We lost people we care about, but you know, the death rate on it is, Men's school, I mean, men's school, and I'm not undermining anybody's death, compared to Ebola in Africa, where there's a 90% death rate of children, adults, and everybody, right. where just churches were turned into morgues. Yeah. I'm not talking about a morgue in New York or a morgue here. I'm talking about every church was a morgue. And when you when you got it, you died nine out of 10 times. Yeah. But yet I saw the pastors there using their vehicles, using their churches, engaging, putting on PPEs and helping people and feeding people and doing education. I did not see pastors in the churches I work with in Liberia taking sabbatical. And some of them did catch it. And, and of many them of them died. Die. And they trusted that the Lord would get them home. Right. I'd like to think, Beth, that, that we'd have the courage to answer the bell if we got a real disease here. Right. If we got a real crisis here, mm -hmm. I'm concerned about the state of the church not a being able to answer the bell of what may be ahead of us. Because if we think this was an end time thing, this doesn't even pale in comparison no. to what we see in no. the book of Revelation. So no. we got to really work on that. But I, I like this. The Lord, we're promised the Lord watches and he stands shade over. So thank God that he's our covering and we're not our covering. Right. Amen. Because if we were, we'd be in trouble. We in other would. words, yeah. Yahweh is our shade in this situation. So hear this. God is your best man. God is your God is your person here. And and and, and if you're against God, let me say it this way. <laughs> Look at this, Beth. He's your fiercest opponent. Yeah. Because God's the one with the wide stance. So so I mean 
if if you're against God, then he's like Caleb. You know, you know, it's like my back's killing me. If yeah. you're trying to fight God, you're gonna he's gonna break your back every time. Right. You're not gonna make it. So God can be your best man or your fiercest opponent. It all depends on which side of him you stand. Right. Do you stand against God or do you stand with God? Are you going with him and he's plowing the way, or are you standing against him? I I, I think that's a terrible idea to stand against God. I do too. Psalm one twenty one six tells us that the sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by by, by night if you are going in behind God. You yeah. want to be behind God. The psalmist tells us that if, as they're marching up, they're realizing they're marching together, they're going toward God. The sun's not going to harm them. The moon, the moon at night. So the sun will not harm you by day. Important. When the light's out, a lot less things happen. We know when I was in, when we were doing a Hurricane Katrina re- re- relief down there during the time, Hands of Hope got started then, and we were down there doing relief. And I'll tell you what, we'd be fixing houses and doing stuff and doing all this stuff. And then guess what? It would get dark. Mm-hmm. When it got dark, we started hearing gunshots when we were down in New Orleans. We hear people shooting and screaming and hollering. And we all kind of, frankly, we hunkered down. And, well, everybody on the group carried. So we, we, we weren't, I mean... You just want to protect yourself because when it got night, it got funky. Yeah. And that's the sun will not harm you by day, but we know that the night belongs to evil. Yeah. Right? What he's saying here is when God is your shepherd, when God is the one whom you seek your help from, when God is your big daddy, the sun won't harm you by day because he's watching over you, nor the moon at night. So so even though that evil, the devil's been given the night. He doesn't have the night for those of us that follow God because we're behind his protection. Mm-hmm. So, so so even though the, that, that things are a little different, the Yahweh is available to us day and night. Yahweh's vigilant. He's right. not going to sleep just because the moon's coming out. Right. He's not going to get scared because the texture of the atmosphere is changing. Mm-hmm. And you would think that would be good enough. Wouldn't you think that just understanding that a relationship with God protects you in the day and even in the evil times, you would think that would almost be enough to kind of you know, you said in one of the previous episodes, uh, you said when we were talking about Psalm 90, you said that people have a difficulty grasping eternity as their dwelling place or their home mm-hmm. and that we're short-sighted. If we could see that better, maybe we'd understand it. And I think that's true. But I also think if people can understand that God, a relationship with God will help you in the day when things are upright, but it will also help you in the society when it's pressing against us and and, 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 and things are dangerous, it will yeah. protect us. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got to remember that. The Lord keeps watch. Look at this. I'll give you this text here. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and as you go. You're going out and you're coming in. That's in the day and the night, Mm -hmm. both now and forever. What a promise that is. I mean, this portrays a Yahweh's protection that moves around and is with us. It's not just stationary. It goes with us. And I told you you in the previous broadcast on Psalm 23 about... About, yeah, I'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil. That's that rah-rah. Mm-hmm. You see that actually here, too. Let me see if I can show that to you. Uh, the word here for uh, right here, he watches over your life. It keeps you from all harm. The word harm right here, Beth. The Lord keeps you from all harm. That actually should say in the New King James, the Lord keeps you from all evil. Mm. Terrible word here. The New Living made that all harm. Harm is kind of like, well, I'm going to fall over and stump my toe. All evil is that rah-rah, that evil, that distress, full adversity. Mm-hmm. And so I think they kind of softball this one a bit. I'd like well, to... Yeah, and, and good people are harmed and good people do die. But it's God's protection is the ultimate protection. Yeah. You know, if, if bad things do happen, ultimately you're just stepping into your your home with him. You're, you're not... It, <laughs> When he says nothing bad can happen to you, no evil can happen to you. If you're in relationship with him, you're you're stepping into a good place. We didn't say no challenge. We didn't say right. bad things won't happen. But no evil's going to happen to you that would take you away and, from God. And you have hope. Yeah, you you're not going to be away from God. The Bible says no one can snatch you out of the Father's hands. Right. So nobody can take you And that's you our from. ultimate hope. So the Lord keeps him. you from all evil and watches over your life. Right. He keeps that evening from, from taking away from you. Doesn't mean we're going to have adversity, but nobody can take you from, from, from God right. like that. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and you go. I love that. You're going out. You're coming in. He watches over your life. He keeps you from all harm. In short, Yahweh is our bodyguard. What do you think about Yahweh being our bodyguard personally? Well gives you lots of security <laughs> but i think our bodies are more than just again our physical bodies here i think he is the ultimate bodyguard well you're gonna like this i, I want to help you see this better 
Yahweh is our bodyguard, our mighty warrior. One of my favorite texts hanging in my office, my favorite text, is I never forget in serving God in the end, like Moses, I serve the Lord. And when, when, when God calls me to serve the Lord, he will be there. He will be there for me. And so when you speak, when, you, when, when somebody attacks, when, when somebody stands against me, or, or as long as I'm serving the Lord and doing what the Lord called me to do, and I don't need correction, maybe I do need correction. Right. Maybe somebody stands against me and I need to re repent. I need to correct. Right. But if I'm doing what God called me to do and I'm God's person in that moment, what I know is that Exodus 15, 3 says, the Lord is a warrior. Mm-hmm. The Lord is his name. It's on my office wall. Got it over my closet. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. It is that which, with that statement on my wall that reminds me that as long as I'm where God has me to be, he will fight my battles. He will be right. the one in front of me. Right. He'll be the one that's going to gonna move, the, move, move the obstacle. Right. He's got me day or night, and he'll keep me from Ra. Yeah, the evil. I saw a thing on Facebook the other day. I think it was a cat. It's a picture of a cat, like walking towards you, and he's supposed to be looking menacing. I guess he thinks he looks tough, and behind him is this lion that just kind of dwarfs <laughs> him. But he, it's like he doesn't realize the lion's behind him. Oh, but man. it's really the lion that that everyone's afraid of. The lion watches us too. I always tell people the image of, of how God comes after us. God is either our, our guard and our guardian and our protector. And you can see that in, in this image of Psalm 121. Or the Lord could be your adversary. Right. You're either for him or against him. So the, the, I always tell people, Jesus is the great shepherd to those that love him. And Jesus is the grim reaper with a sickle to those that don't. Mm -hmm. Same Jesus just different relation, different side of the relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's scary. And that's, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. In verse eight, good. look at verse eight here. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and you go both now and forever. What do you think about that? Now and forever. That's forever and ever, hon. Right. I mean, it, once you commit yourself to God, he's committed to you. Yes. I mean, that decision's made. And you're so, secure. And you're secure. He's your, let me back this up. He is your, I mean, I love this. I could go back one more slide here. But he's your, oh, I don't know where it went. Technical difficulty, please stand by. No, Yahweh is our bodyguard, our mighty warrior. That's good. I like that. When we're in line with God, he's our, our bodyguard. Right. So these guys are rising to the hill saying, we're coming here to make sacrifice. We're coming here to honor God. And they're, they're coming to Jerusalem. They're coming up to Zion toward the Holy Holies, and they're trying to, in the Songs of Ascent, Psalm 120 through 134, they're trying to bring their spirit and souls into line with God so God can be their bodyguard as they go back and serve as the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. We need to do the same thing with our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to come into sync with God, invite Christ into our heart, but not just invite him into our heart. We need to live for his word and live for his way and be people. People, the early Christians were called people of the way. Mm -hmm. That's because they followed the way, the truth, and the life. They followed the life of Christ. They followed the truth of Christ. So today, a lot of people call themselves people of the way, but they don't have the way, truth, and life thing all happening. Right. When you have the way, truth, and life thing happening, then you have God behind you as the Lion of Judah protecting you yep. versus the Lion in front of you fixing to eat the prey. Yep. You know, are you for me or against mm -hmm. you? You know, the Lord is not really for us or against us. He's the Lord of the heavenly host. He has a plan and a way, and we either get in line with that and fall into that, or, or, or we fall out. Right. The Lord wants us all to succeed. He wants to be our bodyguard, and but the Lord is a warrior. And so it's all going to come down to what we do. When Joshua met the Lord on the road, and the angel of the Lord had his sword drawn, you know, that's the first thing Joshua asked, are you for me or against me? And, yeah. and the guy said, I'm neither. I'm the heavenly host. And what Joshua did was he could have battled him, but instead he took his shoes off and bowed. Yeah. We probably need to spend more time on our knees and let God get our hearts right. Let me wrap up with this, though. There's Psalm 21, 21 gives us a couple basic truths. Number one, God is our helper. He's our best advocate. And number two, God is our keeper. Yeah. He, he, if we can count on him to protect us in day or night, moon or sun, God will protect us and watch over us. And the same God, listen, the same God goes before you. The same God stays awake to guide you. The same God guards your path. The same God is Jehovah. He's the existing one. He's always there on duty. He's just always there. Yeah. The existing one, Jehovah. Yeah. He's always watching. And, and he wants, he, listen, he keeps his eyes on us at all times. 
He's watching us. He's watching us to protect us. He's also, I think, watching us to call us to repentance. He's also watching us when we, when we walk away. Yeah. And so I think the Lord knows our hearts and what we're doing right or wrong. As we wrap up this, this uh, Psalm 121, I, I just want to give an exhortation to you out there. And, you know, if you're listening, I just want to tell you, when things on earth seem too big for you to handle, and there's a lot of that today. There's, my wife and I have never been more overwhelmed by what we cannot control or manage in our society than ever in our life today. Mm, so sure. we're really being tested on trusting God to get us through this because, gosh, I mean, the way the world is, I mean, I, you just would struggle if we were to start over again, would I even have kids? Yeah. You know, I want to have kids. I, I believe it's important. And I believe it's important that our kids change the next world. It is. But you have to go, man, the kids that are raised today are raised. And I mean, I thought I was raised in tough times. The kids that are coming up now are raised with a whole different level of playing field out there. Yeah. So it's like they're being raised in a hostile world to people of faith. So when the things on earth seem too big for you to handle, the Psalm tells us, lift our eyes up the mountain of ascent yeah. to the mountains of God and know that Yahweh, Yehovah, has your back. Yeah, and he's equipping them to he's live in the times them. that they're living. That's right. In. The one thing I've learned is that maybe our kids are struggling right now, but the kids are also been equipped for times such as this. Right. We've all struggled with our faith from time to time, and we made it through. Yeah. These kids have also been raised in this crock pot, and this crock pot's a little more of a pressure cooker than our. We had a crock pot. Okay, that's, that's a good example. That is good. Yeah, you know, we had a crock pot, and they now have a pressure cooker. Yeah, we had a deep fryer, and we now have what was that air fryer, Bill? The air fryer. Yeah. You throw the air fryer. You throw something in the air fryer, and in and, and sixty seconds, it's like crispy. Yeah. You know the old fashioned way to drop it and shake the basket for four or five or six minutes, and then you had to wait an hour for it to heat up. The the air fryer. <laughs> I mean, I fried some some food the other night in it, and just like a minute and a half, I refried something. It was just amazing. Yeah. These kids have grown up in that world, so they can. I think they'll be able to respond to the challenges as long as they understand Jehovah has their back too. Yeah. Twenty four seven three sixty five today tomorrow and until the kingdom comes and then for eternity and beyond that, God has us, especially those of us that trust in him. He has our coming and he has our going. I hope you've enjoyed Psalm 121. Did you enjoy it, Beth? I enjoyed it. We're going to be back with you in another podcast. We'll be taking a look at Psalm 130. That's our seventh in this installment. It's our last one in the, the series. And then we'll be coming back in part eight and doing the thing where we pull all these together in an amazing way. But Psalm 130, my hope, we'll be back in part seven for that. I hope you've enjoyed these psalms. Check these out. You can you can find us and all the information about us is at onthedoc.org. You can email us at info at onthedoc.org. And you can check us out on all our platforms at YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Facebook, Roku, Google Podcast, Rumble, SermonNet, and social media. Give us a shout out on social media. We, Beth wants to see your Facebook and Instagram posts about this episode. Tell us how you enjoyed it. I don't know. And don't how about, about Telegram that. and Twitter? Uh, we'd love to have it. Make sure you share, subscribe, hit notify, like, and all those things. And share our podcast with other people. We want to get more people involved with what we're doing nice. on the doc. And be nice. We want to be, be nice to everybody. And always become a Patreon sponsor or partner with us. We'd love to have you. Just find us at Patreon. Download the app on the doc with Pastor Troy. Or you can link there using our portal at onthedoc.org to get there as well. And I'm going to try this with my wife. She failed at the last oh, podcast. No. What do we always tell people? If they don't have a good church home, they can what? Come see us on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. There you go. Come we also, to Community of Faith. We'd love to have you. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you Sundays at 10 o'clock, Wednesday, 630. If you want to check us out, come join us. We have a real campus of real life people in Marion, Illinois. Also, if you aren't anywhere near us or you're shut in, traveling, you're sick, your way, you just want to see a cool church, we have an online virtual presence at coftv.com. We have multiple mediums. You can watch us on Facebook through the Community Faith Church channel or YouTube through the Community Faith Church channel. And we got SermonNet channel as well and Roku. Check all that out. You can go to coftv.com and find all those links. We'd love to have you out for services anytime you're able. 10 o'clock Sundays, Wednesday, 6 30s. And we hope you'll always come back and find us on the dock. We're having a great time here. We've got some great series coming up for you. And we'll see you real soon. Back with Pastor Troy on the dock.